Welcome. Welcome guys to this first video where we'll be looking at BMAT section one and in particular we're going to look at the reading comprehension side of questions. In this series of videos guys we're going to start by looking at arguably the most important question for the reading comprehension portion of section one which is what is the conclusion of this passage? Those type of questions. And not only are they important for those type of questions but all other reading comprehension type questions are going to require this skill. So this is a really really useful skill guys to have in the back of your uh, toolkit um, for the BMAT section one. So without further ado guys let's go over the technique you would use for these type of questions by uh, practicing a couple of questions. So what we're going to start off by doing guys is um, we're not really going to use the BMAT uh, questions just yet. We're going to use something uh, questions from something called the IMAT, which is basically the BMAT in Italy. It's very similar and it's a very good um, resource of questions. So we're going to be using the IMAT 2019 um, paper for questions to do with uh, conclusions. And that question, and the first question in this paper to do with conclusions was question six. So let's go um, through through the technique you would use, guys. So this one, it's fine if you um, don't give it a go. Just watch how I would um, um, do this question. And then in the future ones, we can do the, you know, the regular pause and then give it a go. Okay, so the first thing you would do, guys, is you see this question, right? And then you're going to, um, you, you want to, Firstly, ascertain that this is a conclusion question. So before you even read the passage, I'm just going to read the question. Which one of the points can be drawn as a conclusion? So now, guys, I know this is a conclusion question, so I'm going to put my conclusion cap on, okay? So then, essentially, now we're going to read the passage. And the aim of this game, guys, is that you read the passage and you look for the most opinionated sentence. So the sentence, which is basically the most opinionated, that's not really fact, is more to do with what the author, the reason why the author wrote this, like you should do this, you must do this. That's not really a fact. That's the author's opinion, isn't it? So let's read this, guys. It says, a study involving a brain training exercise was carried out on more than a thousand adults aged 65 and over, some of whom later developed dementia. Okay, so that's clearly a fact, isn't it, guys? It's just showing um, this is who we done the experiment on, this is what the experiment was. That's fact. You you can't make lies about that. So, so that means... Um, that means then we're not interested in the first um we're not interested in the first sentence because it's not opinionated right then the next sentence goes results show that the benefits of the five-week mental agility course undertaken by some of the adults lasted for at least five years okay so this is results results are a fact you can't make up results so this again is a fact so i'm going to cross this out uh, we're not really interested in this one OK, and then the next one, this led to an improvement in everyday activities such as money management and the ability to do housework. OK, again, this isn't really an opinion. This, this is saying fact. This is, is literally saying that if you've done this program, you would have seen these improvements. Right. So this again, all of this stuff uh, is more or less fact, isn't it? So you can cross that out. Then it says if those with trained brains develop dementia, they did so later than those that in the control group. Again, it's fact. It's literally just stating the results of the experiment. So we can cross this out. Good. And it says the results also show that for those people in the study who developed dementia after the diagnosis, their mental decline occurred faster uh, than those who um, had not undertaken training. OK, so again, this this is just results. So all of this is fact. So really, guys, we've, we've actually started with one of the more weirder questions, right, where there's not really an opinionated sentence. So there's two types of questions, guys. There's one type of question where there's a clear opinionated sentence in the paragraph and then it's really just looking at the most appropriate answer, right? But those ones, the answers, we, as we will see, in, uh, uh, I'm sure, in the questions to come, the answers were really similar, so you have to be very, very careful. Whereas these ones, there's not really a clear opinionated sentence but the answers, um, from the answers we, we're going to look at right now, we should be clear which one's correct, right? So whenever you have this situation, guys, what you're essentially trying to do is you've read that paragraph and you just kind of say to yourself, what, what, what is that paragraph essentially trying to say? So it's basically trying to say, if you do this um, brain training program, it would increase your mental capacity, something along those lines. But let's just look at the options we have here. So A, people... Uh, do a decrease in amount of housework as they grow older. Nowhere, guys, nowhere in that paragraph did it say anything about that. So this one has to be wrong, right? Then the next one, it says, it is uh, preferable to have a swift mental decline once um, dementia develops, right? So it talked about dementia, but it didn't say anything about it's preferable to have a swift mental decline. Remember, guys, with these type of questions, 
you don't want to be bringing external information. Literally, if it's not on the page, it's not the answer. OK, so this one's going to be incorrect as well. And then uh, the next one, older people do not perform mentally challenging tasks unless forced to do so. Again, nowhere in that paragraph, guys, nowhere did it say anything to do with um, old, old people being forced to do mentally challenging tasks. So it can't be this one. Then um, the next one, keeping the mind active delays the onset of dementia. Yeah, that's pretty, that's, that was the gist of the thing, isn't it? it basically, training your brain um, is good in terms of um, dementia, as in it, it, it means that you wouldn't de um, dement as fast as people who don't, as in the control. I think here I was talking about the control group. So if you, if you do train your brain up, you delay dementia, whereas if you don't, i.e. the control group, your chances of dementia coming early increases. So... I think this is the best one so far, but let's just check the last one as well. All over 65, you undertake brain training live for at least five, uh, sorry, live for at least five years afterwards. Um, so where did it talk about 65 and over? The only po point it talked about 65 and over was there. And that was really just to do with the study participants. I think it said something to do with the su study participants for 65 and over. It didn't say anything, guys. Um, it didn't say anything along the lines that those over 65 um, with brain training live um, five uh, for five years longer. That, nothing like that. So this one also has to be incorrect. This one has to be incorrect. So I think the answer should um, be D. So do you see, guys, with this type of question, there's not really an opinionated sentence in the paragraph, um, but it's quite evident which one's the correct answer. So uh, A, B, C, and E are quite evidently wrong, whereas D is most likely going to be um, the most suitable answer for this. So hopefully, guys, um, this type of question makes sense. And when we see it again, uh, it will be good to put our skills to the test. So I look forward, guys, to seeing you in the next question. Okay, guys, welcome back. So I think the previous question was question six of IMAT 2019. Uh, pretty difficult opener, I must say, guys. Don't be too disheartened if you didn't get that one. The whole point, guys, is as we do more and more questions, you'll get more and more confident and you'll be willing to take things on your own back, okay? Um, so without further ado, guys, let's move on to the next question. And also, by the way, guys, so these kind of, these type of questions in section one, the, so the timing is more lenient. So rather than section two, where you're allowed a minute per question, here you're allowed a minute 50 per question. So um, more lenient in terms of time. So this one, guys, I think this is more of the classic type of conclusion questions you'll get. So if you guys just watch how I do this one, and then for the further ones, you can start, you know, timing yourself and testing yourself. And that's perfectly fine. So let's go over this one, guys. It says question seven. So first thing first, guys, is I'm going to read the question. Which of the following best expresses the main conclusion uh, of the above passage? I know it's a conclusion question, so conclusion cap on. Uh, then we're looking um, for the most opinionated sentence. So it says, according to the current mainstream scientific view, near-death experiences are applicable in purely uh, physiological terms. Right. So this is this is very fact. Uh, this is very factual, isn't it? It says according to current scientific uh, is not is not the uh, is not the the person who's right. It's not their opinion. Right. It might be someone else's opinion, but he's just stating a, a fact that this is their opinion. So this is also important, guys. When I when I say the most opinionated, I mean opinionated in terms of the person who's writing it. So although the first one is someone's opinion, he's just stating a fact. This is someone's opinion. So this is not an opinionated sentence. Therefore, this is a factual statement. So we're going to cross this one out. So this is we don't need this. Then it says specifically they are caused by cere um, cerebral anoxia, oxygen deficiency in brain tissue, which occurs in a, a dying patient. So it's just literally explaining what causes this near-death experience, right? That's really a fact, isn't it? So we're not going to worry about that. Uh, good. And then it says, on the other hand, recent research on hundreds of successfully resuscitated cardiac patients found that only 20% reported NDEs. Right. So again, also, this is just a general tip. Guys. Whenever it says states numbers and, you know, someone won't just make up a pluck a random number out of the air. This is going to be really factual stuff, isn't it? So again, this is all factual stuff. So we can cross this all out. Yep. It says if NDEs had purely medical causes, then most of the patients should have experienced them since they had all been clinically dead and experienced cerebral anoxia. Right. So this one, I would argue, yeah, this one's uh, um, this one's his opinion. Isn't it? He's saying, OK, so surely if th if these NDs have medical causes, then this this is what I think should happen. Right. So this, I would say, is a piece of so far. That is the most opinionated sentence. Right. And then the last one, NDEs, therefore, 
do not have purely physiological causes, right? So that's clearly, guys, this one's clearly the most opinionated sentence. It, he's literally saying, um, he's making a bold statement. That's how I know this is the uh, most opinionated. He's literally saying, they do not have this. You must not think this. Also, guys, another um, tip is he's using this word, therefore. This is also this is what we call, guys, a conclusion indicator, right? So a conclusion indicator. Um, think about it, guys. When, for example, let's just say you're going out with your friends. Uh, you're going on holiday with your friends, and you're trying to push forward that you should go to France, right? So you're going to say, okay, um, um, France has good food. France has good museums. France has good, um, you know, um, night shows, etc. Therefore, we should go France, right? So normally you say a bunch of reasons and then therefore you should do this. So that therefore is a really good conclusion indicator. So basically what the answer we should be looking for is something to do along the lines of, along the lines that NDEs do not have purely physiological causes, right? So let's see which one matches it the best. And also, guys, you should be thinking of before you even look at the answer, just formulate in your head what should be the answer and look for the one that matches that the most, right? So not all successfully resuscitated cardiac patients have NDEs, doesn't sound too strong. Not all clinically dead patients have NDEs, doesn't sound too strong. NDEs are caused by oxygen deficiency in the brain. That's that's a fact, isn't it, guys? We've already established that in the in the parallels. This is definitely not the one. Uh, NDEs are not necessarily caused by physical events alone, right? Uh, yeah, th th this is probably the strongest one so far, isn't it, guys? Because he's saying NDEs do not have purely physical, uh, physio uh, physical or physiological causes, right? And that matches D the best so far. Um, and it says NDEs are physical properties of the human brain, right? Doesn't really talk about anything. It's just saying is is mainly talking about the causes of NDEs, not what NDEs are themselves. So this one can't be the one. So my gut is telling me that D should be the uh, correct answer. Um, how can we uh, knock out B? Not all clinically dead patients have um, NDEs. Um, yeah, so here is is not talking, uh, is more talking about the cause of NDEs, right? Not who has them or who doesn't have NDEs. So this one can't be the one. And then A, not all successfully re resuscitated cardiac patients um, have NDEs. Also, guys, the way I know this one's wrong, it's referring to a really specific part of this whole passage, right? It's really talking about this cardiac part, right? That's what that part is talking about. But this is what expresses the main conclusion, right? So this person didn't write this whole thing just to talk about cardiac patients. He wrote about, he wrote this paragraph to really talk about the NDEs, not specifically the cardiac stuff. That's just an example he's giving, right? So it can't be this one. So therefore, guys, through a process of elimination, um, D is the correct answer, but I hope you guys can see, guys, th this is the type of question where it's really clear which one's the most opinionated sentence in the paragraph, and the options are, some of them are quite similar, and it's really hard to suss out, you know, which one's the exact correct one, um, but to find the most opinionated sentence, that's quite easy uh, from this paragraph, so hopefully now, guys, you've seen the two different type of questions, and then the next one, you can really give it a good shot.